Allegheny Northern and today we're going to dive into DCC a little bit more and you're looking right now at the latest DCC project and if you're wondering what the heck is that then you're not alone um, this is a very unique install that I'm sure most of you at some point will encounter um, if you got anything um, from the 90s to early 2000s by Atlas, Lifelike, um, and a handful of others. So if you'd like to see how an install like this goes together, hang around and we'll show you here in just a minute how we do DCC when it's not a standard drop in decoder. Okay, we've got our chassis back here at the workbench. Um, you saw it running just a few moments ago. Um, and it may have sounded a little loud to you. This model, for some reason, has always been loud. I don't know if it's the gearing, uh, but it doesn't matter whether it was DC or DCC. It was always, it was always loud. Um, and this is a Canadian Pacific. It's an RS3. It's made by Atlas, and it is one of the Atlas classics. Um, it's a pretty cool model, um, just because it's well, one. Of, it's the only RS3 that I have on the layout. Um, so I'm justifying it as far as least power. Um, it looks really cool pulling trains um, as far as, you know, some, some local switching, some yard work, that sort of thing. Um, but it's different than all of the other decoders. So um, it's got a drop-in decoder um, that uh, is a little bit different. So what I mean by, by drop-in, and that is right here, uh, these are the components that make up the DC version. So um, what happens is one of these slides into each side here uh, and as you turn the locomotive on, standard DC, the light that corresponds to the direction lights up. Okay, that's all That's all well and good, but um, DCC is obviously a little bit different. So before this version, what you'd have to do is take one of these little guys. Uh, this is Digitrax. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen something like this. Um, it's got the decoder, it's all wrapped up here under the shrink wrap. It's got the harness and that's got all the wires. You'll notice the colors are um, pretty much the same. Um, that's a universal standard there as far as DCC goes. Now, the problem is with this little guy, there is absolutely no space. This doesn't fit. So to make it work, you have to modify the chassis uh, to fit somewhere in the very limited space um, that Atlas gives you. It was not intended to ever go DCC. So um, that obviously doesn't work and we needed to do something a little bit different. So to the rescue, um, TCS, Train Control Systems, uh, came out with the CN um, and CNGP models and what it does is allows you to use the separated board to install um, DCC on an older uh, model like this. Now, that being said, uh, this looks like it should be relatively simple. Um, it gives you a couple of locations to wire to, and in theory, yep, it's simple. As long as you've got some basic soldering skills and a nice, fine, clean tip solder, soldering iron you should be set and ready to go but what is the main thing that we try to do when we're doing DCC we try to isolate the motor from the shell it's critical so this becomes very very challenging on this motor because it has two brass tabs that are in basically in direct contact to the each half of the of the chassis um, and it it doesn't lend itself to this kind of work so what I had to do, um, and this is this is through the help of the TCS website. Um, you have to take the whole locomotive apart. Um, so both halves, take all the gears out, take the motor out. You actually trim off these brass tabs. Um, you leave just a tiny little bit to solder the gray and the orange wire to, um, and then you wrap it in the captain tape um, to to protect it and, and turn it on. Now, what I will tell you is um, this was was. A, uh, trial and error for me. Um, I did know uh, right off the bat that I had a problem um, when I first installed these. Why? Put this thing on and I heard the, the hum you get when you put a non 
decoder loaded um, locomotive on a, tr on a system running DCC. So what it was, was I did not have the motor properly isolated. And so the uh, DCC packets um, were coming through the locomotive, but they weren't getting to the decoder or they were bypassing the decoder. Um, really bad situation. Uh, it can actually result in you frying your decoder. Fortunately for me, that didn't happen. Um, but you got to be careful because that could have ended badly. The second problem I have with this locomotive is because it's been sitting so long, um, all of the oil and grease that had been uh, on the gears had basically turned to glue and they had bound everything up. So I had to clean that all up and, and get it running, um, which you just saw there was the outcome of that. It is running now back to basically where it was um, before it before it went in, you know, into the box for a while. So the ideal plan here is that these wires get trimmed up. There's You, you don't want to leave all this. You don't need it. Um, so I had only uh, soldered these in place to make sure I understood the install. So I'm going to clean this up um, and get it ready to run. And then I've got another little gem here. This is a lifelike. It's a GP20 Burlington Northern. Um, it's actually a favorite locomotive of mine. It's just this little tiny thing. It does great um, as far as pulling um, some some locals around. Um, and that's, that's what I want to use it for. You'll notice that it's got the split board here. So I will be putting together um, the DCC on this. I will show you step by step. Um, here's our decoder here. This model takes the CNGP. Um, it is exactly the same. The only difference is instead of having um, where you see here where this sign sticks through the uh, chassis, uh, it's it's squared just to, just like this one is. So that's the difference between the two. Um, you can go on to TCS's website and find out which model um, decoder fits your locomotive so that uh, you don't have to play the guessing game. They've made it easy for you. So I'm going to clean this up here um, and, and show you what it looks like. We're supposed to look like when it's when it's correct. And then we will jump into how to do it on the GP20. OK, so before I put the shell on this one, I want to show you what this looks like, you know, cleaned up. Could I go tighter with these wires? Yeah, I think I could. Um, but I, I opted not to one because it'll fit under the shell as I have it here. Um, and, and two, it'll give me some flexibility. So if something would ever to go wrong and I would need to get in here and, and accidentally break a wire or whatnot, I've got a little bit of play. Um, I can't really imagine what in the world would happen that, that that would be the case. But, um, the second I don't leave enough wire in there to, to do future work will be the moment that something goes wrong and, and I break a wire. So this is, this is as far as I'm going to clean it up I'm going to get the shell on it and, and we'll get it back on the layout and then it'll be time to, uh, to do step by step. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a GP20. It's made by Lifelike. Um, it is, um, here's, the, here's the case in detail right there. Um, and if you'll notice, back in the day, which was about oh, 15 years ago, I believe, paid $30 for this locomotive. All right, so for a $30 locomotive, um, the only upgrades that I made were uh, microtrains couplers. Um, to get them, um, you know, compatible with the rest of the railroad. Um, it needs some, some MU hoses that, you know, they got, set, got them molded in detail, but it needs a little bit of, uh, you know, detailing work. Other than that, um, this has been a reliable locomotive in the fleet. Uh, I think the detail is really good. I mean, it's even, you know, even better when you look at it for a $30 locomotive. Um, and was all excited to get it to DCC. Until I saw this little contraption here um, and saw the two halves. So, as I said, to the rescue comes Train Control Systems, TCS, um, and their CNGP decoder. So, first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and uh, get this thing out of the package so you can see what it looks like. 
So once you get it out of the package, you'll see there it is sitting inside this static proof shielding bag. Um, when you're doing this, like you're doing when you're doing any electronics, um, you should not be wearing clothes that are, uh, for lack of a better term, staticky, um, because a static just discharge from your hand or arm or anything like that onto one of these uh, can can fry the components. So make sure you're as static free as you can um, before you take it out of here. So I recommend doing any kind of um, work um, that you can ahead of time before you actually open it from this this bag. Um, also, you know, that, that's not the time to go put on the new wool sweater you got from grandma for Christmas. Um, it's just not it's just not going to end well. The next step here is we need to take the locomotive chassis apart. Um, that's done easily by loosening the two screws here and here. And sometimes this motor housing has these little clips that like to hang on. Um, you need to get those off as well. Um, you can see right now this, this frame is stamped 1998. So as we're standing here at uh, 2020, um, this, is, uh, this is almost a relic. Now, the other thing is, once you have this taken apart, you may want to take a look at it. You can see there's a buildup of, uh, of grease here, um, which, is, which is not good for, for a locomotive. Um, so it's a perfect time to clean, it, uh, clean, clean the gears and get this thing um, ready to go. So first things first, let's go ahead and take it apart, um, and we'll, we'll show you what's inside. Okay, with our locomotive apart, it is fairly standard. Um, you've got the motor, um, you've got the two halves, um, you've got the worm gears, the flywheels, um, and then of course, um, you've got the two board sections. So, um, uh, first step, uh, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to clean that and you kind of see right here, all that grease out of there. I'm going to clean up these gears. I'm going to take out these boards, um, and then I'm going to separate the motor from the chassis. Now, the reason I'm doing that is you see this little brass tab here, and I just kind of push it underneath there and this brass tab here. That contacts either side of the chassis, which under DC power would be picking up the, the power to um, the motor. So you, the more power you give it, the faster it goes. Um, and then, of course, it's directional. So, uh, you, you know, by reversing it, um, your, your, your locomotive will go the other direction. DCC works a little bit differently. Um, and we don't want the power to go from the track directly into the motor because DCC operates at a constant um, voltage, um, you, you, you don't have any control. The control of the train doesn't come from your power pack, so to speak. It comes from the digital signal that your power pack, or in this case, your command station, is sending out in little uh, information packets across the rails. So what you need to do is in order for that to be in any way useful to the locomotive, the signal has to get from the command station to the rails, to the decoder, and then the decoder tells the train what to do. Um, so with, you know, Digitrack's um, slogan of control your trains, not your track, um, it's actually spot on to what you're doing. Whereas under DC um, standard control, you're controlling the track. The more power you give the track and where you put the power depends on what train moves and how fast and in what direction. Under DCC, it doesn't care what train is on the track. It doesn't care um, which direction it's facing. Um, the only thing it cares about is, okay, did you send me a signal? Um, in this case, we would be sending a signal to 2063. So if a, a signal comes out that's directed to any number other than 2063, this locomotive ignores it um, because it's looking for its specific address. So um, that's a DCC basic. Uh, I, I skipped all the technicals basically, but that's how the system works. So um, we need to isolate this motor from the chassis to make sure that the power is going through the decoder and not directly to the motor. So um, let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and take this apart and I'll show you what we have as far as parts and pieces to get the connection made. Fully disassembled locomotive. Um, you can go ahead and take pretty much everything but the motor and place it off to the side. So get your get your gears off, get your um, your trucks out of the way, get your chassis out of the way. Um, the only thing we're looking at right now is the motor. All right, here is the brass tabs. Now these are going to be what's going to cause you your grief. 
um, because they want to touch the chassis and you need to stop them. But you need these brass tabs because you need to be able to solder to them to get the contacts to the motor because you still need to get power to the motor. So the way that uh, TCS recommends you do it is you pull these back and you cut them off so that you have just enough space to solder. Now on these ones, eh, it's a little difficult to see there, but um, they give you a nice little pad almost at the end there, right, right before that motor goes um, underneath that plastic housing. So I'm going to cut these things back, way back, um, and I'm going to show you what that looks like here. Okay, fresh out of the packaging, out of the static proof packaging, here's what I have. Here's my decoder. Here's the wires. One side has everything soldered to it. One side is, is free. Locate the LED. Um, that's that little tiny square at the end there. You want that facing up. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to place um, these things. The easiest thing, I, I think, to do is, is to solder everything together, leaving the wires long. Um, because what you're doing is you're checking to make sure that everything works. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. Um, and then understanding that this is the wiring diagram that we're going to follow. So um, first things first, um, we need to get these um, prepped. So other than stripping the wire, which no brainer, um, we're going to do um, uh, the proper technique for soldering, which is to... Um, get some solder on the wire and then get some solder on the pads where the wire is going to land. Now what you, the reason you want to do this is because you want as little heat on, on these two items as you can. Heat damages electronics, soldering is basically melting metal. So um, there's, there's a conflict here, but you need to apply just enough heat to melt the solder and then take the heat away. Um, so that you get a nice, good, clean bond, but you don't send the heat out through um, through the through the chips um, because you will damage the print circuit board. You can damage the components therein, and they're tiny uh, and not replaceable. So don't fry uh, a decoder. Um, make sure you you understand what you're doing, and I would practice on some smaller wires first, um, not in a decoder just so you can get an idea how it works so we're going to go ahead and strip this and prep these pads and then we're going to go ahead and make our connections okay so uh, i wanted to show you the soldering technique that, that we're going to use here just because i think um, it'll put some of your minds at ease um, i know that we've all been soldering probably for a long time and um, but when you get to something you know you got a, a 50 dollars chip in your hand um, you might get a little nervous, uh, you know, as far as soldering goes. So what I do, first thing I do is you take your solder. Um, I take a look the, the wire that needs to be soldered. Um, I pulled the two together here. Um, and then just briefly, it's a little hard to do here when I'm trying to, trying to show you in the camera. Just briefly with the tip of the soldering um, iron here, uh, I just want to get enough of the solder on to... Um, this wire and you'll actually see it. You'll see it kind of flow in there It's a little, a little hard to do with the way I'm trying to do it here, but um, It'll just it'll just flow right up the wire and that's that's what you're looking for. You'll get you'll get from the copper to the nice um, Shiny metal -y, um Looking solder. That's what you're looking for and then the same thing here on the pad uh, So it's just a brief um, Just a brief touch uh, you don't want to uh, you, you don't want to over over exert yourself. These are where the um, these two pads here are going to touch the chassis. Um, so you don't want to you don't want to put anything on that. These three pads that is your your soldering location. That's your LED. So all we're going to do very briefly touch the solder right above the pad and apply just a little bit of heat um, and then as soon as that solder um, comes in contact here why don't you get enough of it on the pad <laughs> of course it's not sticking uh, right there and what happened is you saw it spread out over the pad that's exactly what you're looking for um, that's going to be your location for for touching the um, wire to and you're just a 
brief contact um, just to make sure that you've got enough solder on there. And now that's prepped and ready to go. Brief, not a lot of heat, um, and, and now we're ready for solder. So um, with this with this device um, now prepped and ready to go, so this, this will actually sit this way. So you wanna orient it properly to how it's going to sit um, inside the uh, inside the locomotive um, and we'll start with the black wire uh, which is which is always the common and it's right in the center uh, I only stripped enough of this wire um, to uh, make the connection just because I do not want um, any any overlap uh, I don't want it to touch anything it's not supposed to I don't want any kind of uh, electrical issue so now that the wire is tinned and the the pad is also um, tinned we're just going to hold it right to there brief contact just enough to get everything melted and then we're done um, so that's your connection that's all you're going to do that brief little little touch is not going to be enough to to cause you any kind of grief and your components will be fine so you're going to do that a handful of times here um, it's not quite as daunting when you're doing it to the motor um, but obviously with those, those circuit boards, I know that gets a little bit um, tricky. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and put the rest of these wires on. Um, don't be afraid to give it a try. Uh, these these chips are, these decoders are, um, they're a little robust. I mean, I've, I've done some pretty stupid things and, and they turned out just fine. So um, knock on wood, I have yet to actually damage a decoder during installation. Okay, so once you get everything soldered, I wanted to show you the, that's what your soldering locations are going to look like um, once you get to this point now this motor is nice because um, it's got this big plastic housing so I'm going to actually put the captain tape right over here to isolate um, the motor connections from the from the shell but once you get that um, all soldered together this is what you're going to have so you've got your two halves you've got your motor leads all connected up this thing is ready to be reassembled at this point it goes back together. Um, don't forget to wrap this, electrically isolate this, um, but then you are just put your locomotive back together. So when you come back uh, here to the video, I'm gonna have this thing reassembled on the track and ready for programming and testing. Okay, so I've got the shell uh, reassembled here. Um, I'll uh, dance with the light here, but um, you're gonna notice that these are really loose. So this is not making good contact at all. I mean, it's it's the, the two halves are just sliding around. A couple of ways you can deal with this. Um, one, you can put captain tape or something else underneath here to, to shim up this piece um, to, to hold tighter. Um, or you can do what, I, what I've done in some of the uh, earlier videos for installing these. And that is you could put a small amount of solder on the pads to give, uh, to give it a little bit more um, contact. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna just touch this um, onto, onto both of these um, sides here, four locations, give it a little bit more bite so that this isn't sliding right out. Um, but other than that, I've got this thing back together. Um, you know, Check to make sure everything's free, free rolling. Uh, make sure your gears are all free before you go and, and put it on the uh, track. I probably should have started out with this. Um, my channel is not geared towards um, to kids, um, so that's something that you know YouTube made us all sign that we were either making kids um, material or not. This is not kids material. Um, not that it's vulgar or dangerous or anything like that, but uh, you know you are, you are dealing with um, electronic components. You're dealing with solder. Um, you're dealing with tools. I, in, in the course of this. Um, to get everything you know cleaned up and ready to go, I've I've used a hobby knife. I've used pliers, wire cutters, you know the soldering um, uh, iron that, that you've seen. So, um, just as a reminder, uh, parents, this is not something you should let your kids do um, unless you're standing there watching them um, put it together. So, uh, there's my there's my disclaimer, you know, halfway through the video, but my disclaimer nonetheless. So, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be right back here after I touch these up, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what we get. Okay, so here is our 2063 BN locomotive sitting on the program track. Um, I've already read the decoder, um, so I am getting a reading back. Um, so it's set up as a standard decoder would be. Um, so I'm just going to go through the um, process of 
programming it. Um, and I can show you what that's going to look like here. Um, you can tune into some of my other videos for um, exactly how this process works. So I'm just going to do it quickly here um, by assigning the uh, address of 2063. Um, and then all of the um, other items here. So uh, normal direction of travel reverse is off. We are using a 28, not 14 step. Um, we can leave the analog on. That doesn't really matter for this no speed table. And we are using a um, long address. So um, we're going to go ahead and write that information. Okay, task complete successfully. We're ready to move this thing to the main line and give her a shot. All right, folks, if you did everything correctly, this is going to be your end result right here. Um, you will have a functioning locomotive. Um, it is uh, it is best to do what I did, and that is get inside there. Especially on these older models, they use brass wheels. They tend to get dirty really, really fast. You can tell this one's got a little bit of hesitation at some points. Just check the brass contacts. Uh, make sure that they're all good, but you should get... It should look like that when you're done um, running nice and smooth. Now we do need to trim up the wires. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and then after that, um, put the shell on it and it'll be ready to run. So, uh, take these wires, make them as short as you can. Um, there's really no need to have uh, a ton of extras under there. Um, leave a little bit just in case, like I showed you on the, uh, on the RS three. Um, but we'll trim this up and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, and then we'll uh, put the shell on it and I'll show you it running. Okay, when you're done trimming up your wires, this is what you should have. Um, it should be nice, it should be clean, wires should be relatively short. You can tape this down if you want to. I'm just going to let it stay right where it's at. There's no reason to bundle, it's not going anywhere into the shell. If you do tape it down, make sure you don't get tape on either the motor or the brass flywheels, any of the gears, obviously, you'll, you'll jam up the works. Then after you get to that point, it's just a matter of taking your shell, sliding your shell over the top, getting it put back on, um, and you're ready to hit the rails. Let's go ahead and take it over to the layout and see how she runs. 